everyone and welcome back to the channel. The bike you see here is the bike most of our followers should be familiar with. It's the one you've all seen evolve over the past year since we've started this channel. And it's safe to say that the MSRP value of everything we've done is approaching $10,000. And of course we didn't pay full price for everything um, and are fortunate to have industry hookups, but we wanted to see just how far we've strayed from the stock bike. Now before we get started, huge thank you to everyone who has supported us and helped us reach 5,000 subscribers. Never thought we'd be here and we are very grateful that so many of you have helped support and grow the business. We love putting out quality content and would love for anyone new to come along for the ride and support us by subscribing and liking this video. So recently one of our good friends got his hands on a brand new stock 2021 Suron and there was no better time to truly figure out how much better our $10,000 Surons were versus stock. Some of the things we will be looking at are hill climb performance, ground clearance, battery life, power, and a few other notable things. As you can see in that little intro montage there, the stock bike was plenty capable of doing the things we put it through, but the question is how much better could it be and of course the highly subjective question of whether or not it is worth it. So now we are going to do some hill climb comparisons and I'll have Cole and our friend Grant explain what's going on there. Alright, what you can see behind us here is a quite steep hill climb, probably about 500 feet long with 150 feet of vertical and we're going to take Cole's bike against my new June shift, completely bone stock except for these pegs here. And we're going to race them against each other and see how that goes. And Cole on his bike has done substantially more upgrades. Uh, what do you got on there, Cole? So I got a upgraded battery. It's one of our EMB Pro type batteries we'll be coming out soon with. I'm running 12 kilowatts and I have a 64 tooth sprocket in the rear. So those are the main power and torque upgrades that's going to help me get to the top. By our estimations, Cole should absolutely destroy me up this hill. But let's go find out. Alright, slight change of plans here. Somebody put a lot of branches on the, uh, the other trailer. So we had to switch over to this one. It's definitely less steep by a considerable amount, but it should paint the picture all the same. Alright, so they're going to switch bikes here for a, for a little control testing. Too much power. Alright, we're going to try this again. Little less of a gap that time. Experience does matter, who knew? Immediate reactions, uh, as we figured, my bike right here is much slower. And uh, we just wanted to do a control for that. So I hopped on Cole's bike for a trade and me being someone who has almost no experience riding dirt bikes or anything like that other than just mountain bikes was still faster on Cole's bike. So it's really a huge stark contrast in my opinion. So I also want to talk about just uh, the throttle on the way up. So basically you're 100% full throttle on the stock one the entire time. And you have to modulate uh, the throttle on this one or else you'll loop out. So there's, uh, there's, there's more to be had with this um, where that was topped out on the stock one. I think that uh, upgrading the rear sprocket on this one to a 64 tooth sprocket, the stock one, would uh, help out a lot off the jump and maybe just getting a little bit, you know, more up hills. Alright, so right now we're going to do a little hill climb comparison between stock and the $10,000 Suron. So we have a little line on the ground in front of the wheel. We're going to start there and then just see what kind of effort it takes to get up a hill. Uh, we measured with our angle finder here and this is a 30 degree or a 30% slope. So it's fairly steep. Oh. Yeah, but then I can show how steep this hill is. Oh. 
All right, so now we're gonna do the $10,000 sir on, see what kind of effort it takes from this one. Yeah, so on the stock one, I was full throttle straight off the line the whole way up just to even try and make it up that hill. When I went up the hill, I probably used about half throttle for the most of it. And I was wheeling up and just kind of like trying to modulate it, keep the you know weight on the rear and went up pretty easy. The key takeaway with hill climbs is with more power and traction, you can take a more direct path much quicker. It also allows you to keep momentum up for longer climbs. With the stock bike, you are always full throttle and on steep hills, it won't hold speed. With the built bike, you really can't even go full throttle, but it's nice to know it's there if you need it. Now we will race them and then get a battery check after a long ride. All right, so now we're gonna drag race the two. We got the $10,000 one on the left, stock one on the right. We're gonna count them down. Three, two, one, go. Very convincing performance there. Something to know too is that, you know, even on the expensive one, you really can't put down the kind of power that even a BAC 4000 can give to it. How much you want it? I like that. Oh. All right, so we're at the end of our ride for the day. The $10,000 Suron still has 77% battery left and that's running 12 kilowatts, so substantially more power. And let's go check the stock one. All right, pretty hard to read that, but it's at 54%. And again, that's at 5,000 watts, so less than half the power. A uh, little bit heavier rider, but pretty substantial difference. As was seen, the more expensive one is obviously much better at climbing hills, but it wasn't like there were any hills that the stock one didn't make it up. You just have to work much harder and be a lot more deliberate with your line choice. Now that's not to say that they're equally capable. There are plenty of hills that the stock one can't make it up, where the nice one could, but it's a lot harder to compare them in that scenario since there are a lot of contributing factors once one of the bikes can no longer make it up. One of the most notable differences that is extremely hard to convey is ride quality. The built Suron just feels so much better. It's more stable, it beats you up less, you can jump farther, higher, and it just feels solid. You can see in this clip here just how easy it is to fully bottom the stock bike and it makes a horrible noise. Oh my god! Now of course you can also bottom the expensive one if you send it big enough like you see here. The main difference being that the threshold is much larger and that nicer suspension is far more adjustable for your riding style. So if you want to send big jumps, you can stiffen it up. The other notable difference is traction and rollover. On the stock bike, you have to work so hard to get traction or clear bumps, and that's very tiresome. With the right wheels and tires, the built bike can roll over bumps much easier and it hooks up when it matters. On the topic of what a better wheel and tire setup gets you, let's talk about ground clearance. One of the big improvements that we've been able to achieve um, since we got the, the stock bikes right is ground clearance. And the things that uh, we've added to this bike in order to get better ground clearance is the main ones are going to be the uh, 19 inch rear wheel with a large rear tire and a 21 inch uh, front wheel with also like a pretty aggressive front tire. And um, when we went to the 21 inch in the front, I also added a riser link in the rear, which you can find on our website. And that uh, just kind of levels the bike out a little bit more. So um, overall, you just get a much taller bike and a lot more room underneath here. So as you can see here, um, we're going uphill over a log and the bike has, you know, over a fist length of room uh, from the bottom here. So. When you're going, you're riding, it's gonna sit a little lower, but this is just something that's really nice to not slam your motor or your bash plate or whatever, the bottom of the bike on logs when you're riding. And especially if you give a little wheelie and a little hop, you can get over stuff much easier. Um, we hear a lot of people trying to recommend uh, 16 inch rear tires and a 19 in the front. And you really aren't getting any improvement uh, with ground clearance if you do that. 
Um, they say you're matching the stock, right? You're keeping it a 19 in the front, stock in the front. And really it's just, uh, it's to me it seems like a bit of a waste of money because you're really missing out on a huge plus of a 21 and a 19. Now you could also do 18 in the rear with a wider tire and you'll get the same effect. So this also allows you to be a lot less precise with your line chores. When you're going really fast, sometimes it's hard to really get on the ideal line, which would be right here. So it's just more forgiving. I'm still off the log right here and just a little bit of a throttle and a wheelie and it'll pop right over. With the stock, you're gonna be a little bit more limited to your line choice and you can't go as fast. So here we have the stock bike over it and it still clears. But as you can see, when you get right over it, there is easily like half as much room. And when you're sitting on the bike with the stock, uh, you know, suspension, you're gonna sag into it a lot more. And this is something you're probably gonna end up bashing on when you're actually on the bike. So here's an example of uh, just getting offline on your bike. Uh, the rear tire is completely off the ground here. And you might pop over this if you have enough momentum, but you're gonna make contact. You're gonna hit it pretty hard possibly even bend in the stock bash guard since it isn't um, very sturdy. And uh, that could even, you know, bump your motor and then release some tension on your belt while you're riding. And before you know it, your belt's stripped, you know? So that's kind of worst case, but it's just, it's a lot more forgiving to have that taller bike. If you've made it this far, thanks again for the support in helping us reach our goals. For us, the answer is easy. Of course we feel that our bikes are worth the money we wouldn't be spending money on them otherwise. Our goal of this video was not to push any products or give biased opinions. We just wanted to show you firsthand some comparisons and let you decide if it's worth it for your style of riding. We hope that you enjoyed the video and if you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing. Have a nice day.